At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, and now you also get automatically entered into the Richard Kane Ferguson Playmat giveaway. Hello and welcome to another modern gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at an Electro Dominance as foretold combo deck that tries to cheat some of these suspend cards into play without having to wait for the suspend to happen. So let me walk you through it. We've got the full four copies of Electro Dominance, X and Double Red for an instant that deals X damage to any target, and then we can cast a card with converted mana cost X or less from our hand without paying its mana cost. So most of the time in this deck we're just going to cast Electro Dominance for X equals 0, just so we can cast a card with Converted Mana Cost 0 from our hand without paying its mana cost. And both a Living End and Ancestral Vision have Converted Mana Cost 0. Usually you would suspend these cards, wait a couple turns and then get the effect, but combined with Electro Dominance or Astral Told, we can cheat them into play right away. In the case of Ancestral Vision we get to draw 3 cards, which isn't bad. In the case of Living End, each player has to exile all creature cards from their graveyard, then sacrifice all creatures they control, and then put all cards exiled this way onto the battlefield. So we essentially swap the creatures from the graveyard with those on the battlefield, and if we combine that with a bunch of cycling creatures, like Striped Riverwinder, which we can cycle for one blue mana, discard it and then draw a card, the Striped Riverwinder ends up in our graveyard, and then we can reanimate it with a Living End to put a lot of power and toughness into play, Striped Riverwinder being a 5-5 with Hexproof. The same goes with a Desert Ceradon, which we can cycle for one red mana to get a 6-4, and Curator of Mysteries, which we can cycle for one blue mana to get a 4-4 flyer that says whenever we cycle or discard another card we get to scry one. And we also have two copies of Fairy Macabre, which we can discard at any point to exile up to two target cards from graveyards, which can also double up as graveyard hate. So these are all the creatures we're trying to reanimate with our Living End, and of course Living End will also wrath the opponent's board and get rid of all the opponent's creatures, so a very powerful tool in this deck. And then the other method for casting Living End and Ancestral Vision is the enchantment as foretold. 3 mana for an enchantment, it says, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a time counter on as foretold, and then once each turn you may pay 0 rather than pay the mana cost for a spell you cast with convert mana cost X or less, where X is the number of time counters on as foretold. So as soon as we play as foretold, we can play Living End or Ancestral Vision for 0 mana, since their convert mana cost is 0, and then on subsequent turns we can also still play Living End or Ancestral Vision, but we also start accumulating more time counters on Astro Told, so we can maybe play some other spells for free as well. So let's take a look at our entire decklist here, we've already covered all the cycling creatures, which we're basically considering as 1-drops in this deck, despite not costing 1 mana. Then at 2 mana we've got our 4 copies of Remand, which counters target spell, and then that spell goes back into the owner's hand instead of their graveyard, and then we also get to draw a card, so Roman just buys us a little bit of time, while we can cycle more creatures and maybe set up our combo. And then we also have three copies of Izzet Charm as a pretty versatile card, can be used to counter target a non-creature spell unless its controller pays two, like Spell Pierce, can deal two damage to target creature, or can be used to draw two cards and then discard two cards, which can also be used to set up our graveyard, discarding more creatures, and help us find the missing combo pieces. Then we've got our four copies of Electro Dominance, which we're usually playing for X equals zero, but every now and then can also be used to take out some creatures or burn out the opponent if we've got a lot of mana. Our four copies of As Foretold, and finally three copies of Cryptic Command as another very versatile counterspell that can also tamp down creatures, draw cards, or return permanence. And then our mana base, we've got two copies of Cascade Bluffs, since we do need both double red and triple blue in the deck, so Cascade Bluffs can help us fix our mana. Four basic islands, two basic mountains, four Scalding Tarns as fetch lands, four Spire Bluffs which come into play untapped as one of our first three lands, two Steam Vents that we can search up with our fetch lands, and then we also have two copies of Tolaria West, which we can transmute for three mana to search our library for a card with Convert Mana Cost 0 and put it into our hand, so we can search up Living End or Ancestral Vision, and after Signboard we've got a few more options as well. And speaking of the sideboard, we have three copies of Chalice of the Void, which is another card with Convert Mana Cost 0 that we can search up with Tolaria West, and since our deck actually doesn't run any 1-drops, we can play Chalice of the Void for X equals 1, which costs us 2 mana to counter all spells with Convert Mana Cost 1, and that can shut down a lot of decks. And then we've got one copy of Tormod Script as more graveyard hate that we can also search up with Tolaria West. We've got two copies of Ingot Chewer, which we're gonna evoke for one mana to destroy an artifact, and then we can get it back from the graveyard once again with a Living End. We've got two Negates against non-creature spells. We've got Anger of the Gods against creature decks, which also exiles those creatures so they can get them back with Living End. We've got a Drake Haven as kind of a sideboard plan against the more controly grindy matchups, and can also sidestep Graveyard Hate and just let us cycle some of our creatures and generate 2-2 two -two flying Drake tokens. 
and then the full four cop is a fulminator mage against the non-basic land decks and we can also recur it with living end which is pretty nice so that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the play and what about this one looks reasonable we can suspend ancestral vision on turn one if we want to we've got astrotold plus another ancestral vision if we hit one more land drop and is a charm can help us draw more cards as well looks okay don't have any creatures to cycle or any living ends but with all the draw from ancestral vision that doesn't seem too difficult and i think i will suspend an ancestral vision on turn one here in case something bad happens to ask foretold we just want to have that card draw lined up could have also gotten a basic island since we have the cascade bluffs would have been totally reasonable as well we're going to regret getting the steam vents if we're up against the burn deck to run scalding turn from our opponents Ancestral Vision takes down, and a Riverwinder to pick up, alright. So we get to pass a turn with Is a Charm at the ready, and otherwise we just cycle a Striped Riverwinder end of turn. Potent gets a tapped Steam Vents, and a Looting, so it could be the Drake's deck here. And if they put some creatures in the graveyard, or Living End could get a little awkward. Don't think I want to Is a Charm the Looting. Potent puts... Finale of Promise and another Faithless Looting in the Graveyard, alright. Finale pretty good alongside a bunch of cantrips to get back Arclight Phoenix. We're gonna make double blue here, I think. Since we have more cyclers for one blue than for one red. And pick up Electro Dominance, alright. So that's another way for us to cast our Ancestral Vision. Desert Serral on the pickup. Alright, so now we've got a few options. We can just Electro Dominance, Ancestral Vision, draw three. Doesn't seem bad, since we have As Foretold as well. We could suspend another Ancestral Vision and then cycle Desert Ceradon, hope to draw more lands. Or we could say go and keep up Izzet Charm and Electro Dominance. Don't think keeping up Izzet Charm is going to be too important here. So I think I'm just going to play Electro Dominance for zero. And then draw three with Ancestral, hoping to hit our land drops. Alright, there's our land. So now we get to say go and then cycle Ceradon end of turn. And next turn play as foretold. And maybe play an Ancestral Vision, draw a million cards. We've got another Ancestral Vision on Suspense coming down soon. So now we just need to find a Living End at some point to go with these cycling creatures. Opponent with a Pyretic Ritual, alright. So maybe our opponent's on some sort of Arclight Phoenix Storm combo hybrid deck. And they've got their own Electro Dominance. For zero. And Wheel of Fate. Interesting. Discard our hand and draw seven. Alright, well, uh, could be dead here. Do we want to do anything in response? I don't think we do. Alright, we picked up a Fairy Macabre. Could be useful. And we've got a backup as foretold. The Runaway Steamkin. Fair enough. Next turn we could go for the Living End, but we might also be dead here if our opponent keeps going off. They've got a Steamkin in play, 3 mana floating, 4 cards in hand. So, yeah, Wheel of Fortune is a pretty good card, as it turns out. So your opponent's doing something very similar with Electro Dominance, but instead of going for Living End, they're going for Wheel of Fate. They might have Ancestral Vision in their deck as well to go alongside the Electro Dominance. So your opponent might have something like a Grape Shot as their finisher. We'll see here. Another Electro Dominance for zero. Let's see what this one plays. Another Wheel of Fate, so we probably want to respond with Fairy Macabre. Not sure what we want to exile from the opponents. Probably the two Faithless Lootings. And pick up some more Cyclers. Electro Dominance. But we no longer have a Living End. Opponent can remove some counters from the Steamkin to make mana. Cast another Ritual. So they've got six mana floating. Six cards in hand. And if they just let us on tap. We get to cycle a creature end of turn here and then hope to draw another living end at some point to go off. Our graveyard is pretty full after all these wheels of fate happened. So a living end is going to be pretty deadly, but we might be dead right now for all we know. Simia Spirit Guide. Is this a hard cast Simia Spirit Guide? It is. And a Grape Shots for a bunch here, but not lethal. So their opponents kind of fizzled out, they couldn't kill us on the spot here, and decided to just go for a medium-sized Grape Shot. So we get to cycle one of our creatures end of turn, and then we gotta hope to find a Living End soon. 
so we can get rid of the opponent's Steamkin and Spirit Guide and get our army into play. We'll have to take one to fetch here. Opponent's got a white mana as well, maybe they've got a Restore Balance in their deck somewhere. To go with the Electro Dominance wouldn't surprise me. But we can Living End at instant speed at least with Electro Dominance. So I think we'll get an Island. Cycle the Riverwinder. Pick up a Ceradon. Ancestral Vision takes down. And Is a Charm to pick up. So we could Is a Charm the Spirit Guide, and then Steamkin only deals us four, so we're still alive. I think we wanna try and cycle some more creatures first, in the hopes of hitting a Living End. Question is, do we do it now or wait in case our opponent casts like a Wheel of Fate? We can pretty much do anything at instant speed thanks to Electro Dominance. So I guess it's okay to wait. Just play Cascade Bluffs for now, say go, and see what our opponent does. Could always Electro Dominance and actually cast it for X equals 2, and then cast an Izzet Charm to take out the Steamkin. But then we lose our method of casting Living End. Opponent moves straight to combat here. So we'll make some red mana. Cycle Ceradon. Another Electro Dominance. Cycle another Ceradon. Alright, no Living End sadly, so I think we're forced to cast Is a Charm now and fall to 1. Opponent says go. Ancestral Vision's gonna draw us a fresh batch of cards here. And there's a Living End, perfect. Alright, so now what's the best approach? Let's say our opponent does have Electro Dominance, Restore Balance. I mean, I guess we would have been dead already since they can just Electro Dominance deal 1 to us. So don't think we need to play around that. How many creatures do we have in the graveyard? Let's check. So we've got a Riverwinder, Ceradon, Fairy, Curator, Curator, Riverwinder, two Ceradons. So we should have more than enough already. I don't think we need to put more creatures in the graveyard necessarily. So I think that leads me to just playing the As Foretold and then casting the Living End right now. And then uh, pass a turn here. And see what your opponent comes up with. Sacks a Bloodstain Mire. Cast a Faithless Looting. Can't really stop that here, so if they find Electro Dominance, we're dead. But they already cast a fair share. Another Looting. Now they might not have the mana to cast Electro Dominance for one. I guess they haven't played a land for the turn yet. What did they discard? Another Spirit Guide, Mana Morphos. Opponent's gonna keep digging. Two red mana floating. And they don't find it. Alright, sweet, so that was a close one. They uh, definitely got pretty close to comboing off there. Alright, so how do we want to approach this matchup? So we know Grape Shot's the opponent's swing condition. They're playing a bunch of rituals, Electro Dominance for Wheel of Fate. Uh, we could always bring in Chalice of the Void and put it on X equals zero. But that would, of course, counter our Ancestral Vision and Living End as well, but that's a way of countering the Wheel of Fate. Uh, Chalice on 2 would stop all their Rituals, but that costs us 4 mana total, which is pretty slow. I don't see much else we want to bring in, outside of maybe Negate. Opponent could have some Graveyard Hate, making Drakehaven a decent plan, so that could be reasonable as well. Plus, if opponent casts a Wheel of Fate, we also end up discarding a bunch of cards, so we can pay the 1 to make a bunch of Drakes. So I guess I can see that coming in. What don't we like? Uh, Roman's pretty good against the Suspend cards, since if we counter those, they go back to the opponent's hand, where they're kind of useless, and we still get to counter them and draw a card. Is a Charm seems okay. Maybe just shave some Cyclers, since uh, we don't need as many to close out the game in this matchup. Yeah, I think I'll just shave a Riverwinder, a Ceradon, and a Curator, since I don't know which one's better. The Ceradon hits for a little bit more damage, but can be blocked by a Steamkin more easily. And then Riverwinder has Hexproof, but doesn't have Flying, so they all have their upsides. Alright, what do we think about this hand? It's pretty decent. I'll definitely keep. We've got an Ancestral we can suspend on turn 1 if we want to, or we can just start cycling and then ask for told Living End or Ancestral on turn 3. For now we can play a Spire Bluff. So now that we picked up a land, we can for sure play As Foretold on 3, not sure if our opponent has any counter spells, since they seem to have a lot of rituals, so not a lot of interaction. So I think I'm just gonna start cycling Riverwinders as soon as possible, in case we pick up more creatures we can cycle, so we can play more effective Living End on turn 3. 
instead of cycling the ancestral vision. Let's see if they have a turn two steamkin here. They do. It's like we're playing standard. Let's cycle the riverwinder. Fairy could be somewhat useful. Also, just an extra creature we can put into play with Living End to speed up our clock. Another Riverwinder, excellent. So, I guess we'll play the Islands and then say go. Can cycle two Riverwinders and then next turn we can Living End back three Riverwinders and maybe a Fairy as well. Opponent did get a Steam Vent, so they might have some interaction this time around for the As Foretold. Steam can get in for one. Opponent passes. Alright, let's cycle. Cryptic Command is good interaction. And another Cryptic. Alright, and a Negate. So do we go for this As Foretold? If it gets countered, then we're in trouble, but what are we doing if we don't go for it? We keep up Negate. If we were gonna play it more slowly, then suspending Ancestral Vision on turn 1 would have been the better play. So I think we're kind of committed to going for this As Foretold and hoping it resolves. And here we kind of want to get another blue source for Cryptic in case we draw Mountain. But we also want another red source in case we need to cast Electro Dominance. So I don't love taking extra damage here, but I think we want to take the Steam Vents just to be safe. And then play As Foretold and hope it resolves. It does. Alright. So do we just go for the Living End right away? I think we do. And then I think I just get three River Winders, keep Fairy in hand in case we need to disrupt the opponent's graveyard. Don't think the clock changes much if we get three River Winders and a Fairy or just three River Winders. Could also wait until next turn to go for Living End, so we can have Negate Backup. But wouldn't they have countered As Foretold if they had interaction here? I think so. And keeping the Steamkin in play is also a scary proposition. Alright, opponent's fetching a response. Maybe get value out of the Steamkin while they can, or they do have a counterspell here. Alright, never mind. Riverwinder's in play, so it's looking good. Maybe our opponent does have Electro Dominance for Restore Balance here, and uh, it gets us pretty good. We'll see. It's going to be 3 mana for Electro Dominance for 1. Cast Wheel of Fate. Do we want to respond with Fairy? I guess so. Get rid of Steamkin Electro Dominance. And uh, let this happen. Alright, got a fresh set of cards. Next turn we can cast Ancestral Vision if the Astro Told is still around. Opponents with two Ravenous Traps as well, that they weren't able to deploy since we never got uh, three cards in the graveyard at once. So, Steamkin, Spirit Guide exiled for mana, so are they going to go off here? Paradic Ritual. Faithless Looting. Yeah, Ravenous Trap, a lot more effective against the Dredge decks as Graveyard Hate than against this particular deck, since we're not always going to put three cards in the graveyard at once. If we had played a fetch land the turn we cycled two Riverwinders, then Ravenous Trap could have been effective. So that's also maybe a reason if we're cycling two creatures to fetch main phase and cycle creatures in the opponent's turn to play around Ravenous Trap. Meanwhile, our opponents making a bunch of mana, they've got three cards left in hand. They could still flash back a looting if they want to, which would put a third counter on the Steamkin. They're gonna go with a mini Grape Shot, which puts another counter on the Steamkin. And it's gonna be four mana. For Finale of Promise, targeting Wheel of Fate and Paradox Ritual, fair enough. So they get to keep going off here. And yeah, Finale can replay the Wheel of Fate from the graveyard, that's an interesting combo. And puts more counters on the Steamkin so they can keep going off, so we could be dead here. After killing the opponent's Steamkin, and now we picked up another Fairy. If we had the Fairy in hand in response to the Finale, that would have been pretty much game over, but uh, we drew the Fairy before and after instead of in response to the finale, Shrine of Burning Rage is another alternate win condition for the opponents. Paradic Ritual puts a counter on the shrine. So they've got five mana in their pool now. Mana Morphos, another counter on the shrine. Flashes back looting. Suppose we could have uh, prevented this had we used the fairy right away here in response to prevent them flashing back looting, but I kind of wanted to keep Fairy for another Finale instead of looting, since Finale is a lot scarier. So I think we still hold the Fairy in hand for now instead of getting rid of the looting that's still in the graveyard. More Mana Morphos. The Shrine of Burning Rage is uh, slowly ticking up here. So that's pretty ominous as well. Opponent's got 5 cards in hand, 5 mana floating. 
It's going to be another looting flashback. Well, hopefully they go for a finale. We get to ferry Macabre, get rid of the two cards they target, and our opponent fizzles out. So that's the hope, at least. Another looting, hard cast. That's fine. So they still have mana thanks to the runaway Steamkin. So they can have up to four mana if they want to. And they decide to cash in the Steamkin for four mana. Desperate Ritual. Shrine of Burning Rage in the meantime up to seven counters, so could definitely end up killing us. Six mana in the pool. Another Desperate Ritual. Shrine of Burning Rage up to eight counters. Alright, hopefully uh, no Electro Dominance to the face and then next turn kill us with Shrine of Burning Rage. Ooh, and there's Electro Dominance for X equals five. And another Shrine of Burning Rage in play now as well. And they can even sacrifice a shrine with the floating mana they still had. Alright, so we're just dead here. Fair enough. So that was quite a sequence of events. Maybe got punished a little bit for not exiling the Faithless Lootings with a fairy right away. And trying to hold it for a finale instead. It definitely didn't pay off. Maybe had we exiled the Lootings, our opponent would have fizzled out. Alright, I mean, after seeing Shrine of Burning Rage, we probably want to consider the Ingot Chewers as answers to that. Again, Shell seems a little bit too slow. Don't want to cast it on 0 since it counters our own deck, and on 2 we'll need 4 mana, which I don't think we will get to very often. We could consider Tormod Script for the finales and the lootings. Seems a little bit narrow. I prefer the Fairy, which is more unexpected. Cryptic Command is maybe a little bit too slow for this matchup, although it is a way to bounce the Shrine of Burning Rage once it enters the battlefield and picks up a few counters, so maybe one Cryptic is fine. And Drake Haven is maybe also a bit too slow, our opponent did bring in those Ravenous Traps as Graveyard Hate, but they didn't seem too effective. So I'll probably just bring in another Cycler here, and we'll go with the Riverwinder. So is this okay? For Asphertol, two Fairies, one Cryptic. As many Counterspells as we can. Some Ingot Chewers for the Shrines. Yeah, this seems reasonable. Alright, so let's be on the play. And what do we think about this hand? We've got Electro Dominance, but only blue mana. Ancestral that we can't quite suspend on turn 1, and no as foretold, so I don't think we can keep. This seems more functional, we've got some Cyclers, we've got Is it Charm and Remanda's interaction, and even some Graveyard Hate. Don't have any of the combo pieces, but hopefully we can draw into those. So this is a keep, and then what do we put on the bottom? Could be one of the two interactive spells, could be the Fairy. So we already have Remand to counter a wheel, Fairy could be good against Finale. I think I'm still putting the Fairy on the bottom here, since I think we need the Is a Charm and Remand to dig us deeper into our deck to find the combo pieces. And we'll just say go for now. So our opponent doesn't really seem to have any interaction, they're all in on the combo. So we don't have to fear any counter spells for game 3. Not sure what the white mana is for, so it might be for some sideboard cards. End of turn we'll cycle Curator. As for Toll to pick up, so now we just need a Living End or Ancestral to draw some more cards. Play land, say go ready to remand everything they play. We do have to be careful with Is a Charm discarding two cards, since that could enable a Ravenous Trap if they still kept those in. Shrine we can remand. Could counter it with uh, Is a Charm, but I would rather just remand here, buy a bit of tempo, and now Ingot Chewer is a perfect answer to the Shrine. So we could go digging by cycling. I think we just say go, and then maybe remand the Shrine a second time before playing the Ingot Chewer and getting rid of it. Alright, let's remand. And there's a land. And our opponent uses Spirit Guide to replay the Shrine. Alright, so now we get to take it out with Ingot Chewer, which is perfect. And I think it's worth taking two damage. Play with Evoke. Take out the Shrine. And now we still get to keep up Is a Charm as well as our Cyclers. And then it's just about finding a living end at some point. So we've got a nice start here. I guess a Ravenous Trap is pretty good if they combine it with a Wheel of Fate, since they can uh, make us discard our hand and then uh, still be able to get rid of our graveyard. Shrine of Burning Rage, second time. I think we want to counter this, since it's pretty scary. If they have another spirit guide, they could pay for the is a charm, but they've already used one. Alright, that works. So countering those shrines is pretty big. And there's a living end. So we could tap out for Asphertold, although we don't have much in the graveyard yet, so I wouldn't 
want to cast a Living Ant at the moment. But if our opponent plays a Wheel of Fate, then that's a way to guarantee as foretold in place. So if we draw another Living Ant, we can cast it. So it's kind of close. Tapping out also might let the opponent go off next turn. They've got four cards in hand remaining. Yeah, this is kind of close. If we keep up our Cyclers, we could draw in two two mana interactions still. I think I'm just going to say go and keep up the Cyclers and then we can cycle twice end of turn and then maybe set up Astrotol Living End next turn and hope nothing bad happens. All right, a third Shrine. Opponent uh, really likes those Shrines. So I guess we want to cycle a Riverwinder in response in case we pick up another Remand Ancestral Vision instead. All right, Shrine resolves. Opponent plays a land and of turn we'll cycle again. Electrodominance, so now we can Living End at instant speed as well. All right, I think we play land and say go and then set up Electrodominance end of turn instead of doing it main phase with Asphertold. Although if we wait, we could run the risk of our opponent going Mana Morphos, make double black and then hard cast Ravenous Trap. That could be a thing as well. I think I'm still saying go though. Because this way we get to maybe kill uh, Steamkin before it manages to go off and generate a ton of mana by casting Living End at instant speed. So there's definitely an upside to waiting here. And we could have suspended Ancestral Vision, but since we have double as foretold, we can probably cast it at some point. All right, there's a Steamkin. So let's see if we get rewarded for our patience. So as soon as we get priority back, we want to cast Electrodominance here. Opponent cast Manamorphos, and in response we want Electrodominance. And uh, I think we want Electrodominance their face, since if we kill the Steamkin and then cast Living End, they get the Steamkin back. And Electrodominance for zero seems enough, since we have lethal with our creatures. Cast Living Ants. And see what our opponent can do here. The answer is nothing. Ingot Shure comes back into play, kills a shrine. And that's pretty nice. Alright, Mana Morphos resolves. Another Steamkin, but only one mana left and two cards in hand. So I don't think this will be enough for them to really win the game. So they can survive by jumping the Cerdon here, but that's okay. They lose a Steamkin. And I'm not sure how they can win from here, other than a lot of luck. And we'll keep up her mind just in case, instead of tapping out. Could have tried to ask for Told Ancestral, hope to draw land, so we keep up her mind, but doesn't seem needed. Alright, so we got some pretty sweet games against a pretty innovative deck, and our patience in the third game definitely paid off. So on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand looks pretty decent. We've got Electrodominance plus Living End, a creature we can cycle, another one we can used to discard and attack the opponent's graveyard. Looks like a keep to me. Probably need to get a Steam Vents with a Scalding Tarn, so we have double red and blue mana for the Riverwinder. And turn two we also have a Charm for interaction, or maybe dig a little bit deeper, find more creatures to discard. Let's play Scalding Tarn, say go. Opponent with turn one Polluted Delta, Watery Grave, so it could be Grixis Shadow. And instead a Delver of Secrets, so some sort of blue-black Delver deck. Hopefully we can uh, get rid of that with Living End, but uh, Delver probably means our opponent has uh, quite a few counter spells as well. So let's cycle the Riverwinder, and now our opponent knows what's up. Another Riverwinder to draw is nice. Could Electrodominance right now just to get one Riverwinder, don't think that's enough to win the game. So I'm probably just going to be a little bit more patient here. Cycle a second Riverwinder, once we cycle a second Riverwinder, we might be able to go for it. If we have 4 mana, we can Electrodominance with maybe is a Charm backup. Opponent gets Insectile Aberration, tax us for 3. And we'll cycle this Riverwinder. As foretold to pick up, and Ancestral Vision. Alright, so if we play this As foretold, if it resolves, we can draw more cards with Ancestral um, before going for the Living End, and then next turn we can Living End with is a Charm backup. And if they countered As foretold, that's one fewer counter for the. Electrodominance Living End combo, so that seems fine. Opponent is quick to Stubborn Denial. Now if our opponent follows up with a discard spell, we're gonna be sad. So, I mean, we definitely could have potentially won the game with just one Riverwinder, but then if our opponent delves like a Gurmag Angler, they can just block the Riverwinder and uh, we're back to square one. They could have a Liliana of the Veil for all we know. Although I guess we would have had a Fairy Macabre in play as well if we wanted to. Alright, Ramanda draw. So we don't want to take infinite damage from this uh, Insectile Aberration. 
but I don't know if we want to go for Electro Dominance without a Counterspell backup here, since it's very unlikely to resolve. I guess for now uh, we can pay for Stubborn Denial if that's the Counterspell they have, but they probably have another one too. Yeah, I think we just pass a turn here. Alright, Snapcaster Mage. Well, now they activated our Trap card. End of turn after Snapcaster resolves, we can Electro Dominance for zero, or even for one, just to deal one extra damage to our opponents since we don't need that one mana anyway. And I think I'm gonna keep the Fairy in hand to maybe counteract future Snapcaster Mages, since the 2-2 Flyer is probably not too relevant. And uh, yeah, we got two Riverwinders, and our opponent lost their two creatures, so... That's the advantage of Electro Dominance over Astrotold, is that we can do it at instant speed, and that's pretty nice in situations like these. We could have still used the Fairy to exile some creatures from the opponent's graveyard, to maybe prevent a Gurmag Angler from being delved, although they would need one more mana or one more card in the graveyard before they can make that happen. I guess it would have been reasonable too, although Remand is pretty good against a Gurmag if they don't play it this turn, and our opponent's just gonna scoop him up. Alright, so up against a blue-black Delver Snapcaster style deck, can expect him to bring in some graveyard hate, maybe Surgicals, maybe Ravenous Traps, maybe something else. So Drakehaven could be an okay plan, also makes 2-2 drakes that block the Delver of Secrets once it transforms. I uh, don't think we want Anger of the Gods, Fulminator doesn't seem necessary. Chalice of One can be pretty effective here. Poen probably has some cantrips, some 1 mana discard spells. Delver costs 1 mana, maybe Death Shadow for all we know. And then Negate is probably okay too. Remand is good against Delve creatures, not great against the rest of their deck since it's also cheap. Is a Charm is probably fine since it can always kill a Delver as well. Cryptic is a bit on the expensive side, but it does give us some nice interaction. So I think we're just going to cut all the remands and then maybe shave some of the cycling creatures. Or maybe shave a Cryptic Command since it's so bad against Stubborn Denial. Yeah, let's just take out two Cryptic Commands, why not? And then uh, bring in our Drakehaven, Chalice and the Gates. Seems okay. Also have to be mindful when we bring in Chalice of the Void that we also don't bring in Ingature, since Ingature is not a May ability, and if Chalice of the Void is the only target, then we have to destroy it. What do we think about this hand? Uh, it's not great. We can cycle some Ceradons, we have a Living End, but no Double Red, no Electro Dominance, no As Foretold. We don't know how much discard our opponent has. If they have a lot of discard, then this hand is fine, since if we have one As Foretold or Electro Dominance, they can take it away anyway. I guess we can still try and keep... Tolaria West can always get a, an Ancestral Vision. Alright, our opponent starts with Leyline of the Void as their Graveyard Hate of Choice. Well, not much we can do about that one. So now we're on the hard cast Creatures plan, which is not a great plan, but uh, can sometimes win the game. Electro Dominance. So I'm still fine cycling Desert Ceradon since we need to hit our land drops, find some more action. And it's not like we're close to casting it for 7 mana. But yeah, Leyline of the Void, one of the more effective Graveyard Hate cards. That's why keeping in Cryptic Command to bounce it could have been nice. Let's just play a land, say go. And end of turn we'll cycle the Ceradon this time. Opponent does nothing. I mean, it could be that our opponent kept a pretty poor hand just because it had a Leyline of the Void in it. No way of knowing. Is a charm to pick up. And Curator of Mysteries, now that's one of the cards we can pretty easily hardcast. But we can also Tolaria West for Ancestral Vision, which is pretty tempting. So I think we'll do that for now. Could also get a Chalice on one and cast it. That's also reasonable. Although we would probably need to protect it with Is it Charm to make sure it resolves. So yeah, it's between Ancestral and Chalice. Opponent not doing anything in the early game implies that they might have something like a Gurmag Angler as their threat or just a bunch of counter spells. So I think getting Ancestral is probably slightly better here. Since then we can suspend the Ancestral and then the turn it comes off of Suspend. We'll have our mana on tap to be able to fight over it in case our opponent has some counter spells. Alright, opponent goes for the Thought Seize to take away the Ancestral. That's one of the risks for transmuting the Tolaria West without being able to suspend Ancestral right away. Opponent takes away Electro Dominance instead. Fair enough. We didn't have Double Red to cast the Ancestral Vision right away, but uh, maybe they feared the instant speed Living End just to wrath their board. Since Living End will still kill their stuff, but it just won't bring our stuff back. So we'll pass a turn here. Opponent says go. Cycle Ceradon, pick up another Ceradon, Ancestral Vision takes down, Chalice, alright. So we could go for Chalice for one, chances of it resolving are somewhat small, although if their counterspells are Stubborn Denials, 
we can still play one unless they have two of them. So we would like to go for Chalice with Is a Charm backup. So I think I'm gonna wait another turn. I uh, could main phase cycle Cerodon. Think I'm gonna wait. Don't really want to cycle the Curator since we can almost hard cast that one. If your opponent plays a discard spell here, they can mess up our plan a little bit. It's gonna be a Marsh Flats for an untapped Warrior Grave. And a Tassigur, the Golden Fang, as their Delve threat. Fair enough. And they've got one mana back for maybe Stubborn Denial. All right, we'll just uh, cycle Cerdon here. And a Spire Bluff. So got punished for not cycling main phase since this was our land draw for the turn. Don't think we cycle Curator quite yet. Ancestral takes down. Riverwinder to draw. Let's cycle the Riverwinder. Living end the pickup. Play a Spire Bluff, say go. And then next turn we can go for Chalice with Is a Charm backup, although now they might have more than one counter spell available. Opponent plays a Death Shadow. Alright. Would have been nice to counter that with a Chalice. Sensual Vision takes down, so next turn we'll get to uh, draw some extra cards. As foretold is a great draw. I think we go for Chalice on one, fight over it with is a charm, hope it resolves, and then next turn we can go for As Foretold to wipe the board and buy ourselves more time. Opponent's got a mana leak as their counterspell of choice. We'll counter back. But mana leak means that uh, they might have more mana leaks as counterspells instead of stubborn denials. So they might still be able to counter As Foretold despite a chance being in play. Could also go for instant speed electro dominance, but we're taking 8 here so we don't have a ton of time. Opponent says go. Ancestral happens. Get to draw some cards. And Cryptic Command, Drakehaven, another As Foretold. So the Steam Vents means we can both play As Foretold and Electro Dominance for zero. So that's pretty important. So let's lead with the As Foretold. See if this resolves. And then we're just going to use Living End to wipe the board. And then Drakehaven is an excellent alternate win condition here. So I don't think we want to take two to play Steam Vents here. So we'll just play Tapped. And say go. And a Snapcaster Mage end of turn to pressure us. Fair enough. So yeah, now the plan is to try and resolve Drakehaven. And then use our Cyclers to make Drakes. Opponent fetches. Now if they play more creatures, then uh, of course Living End no longer really works, since then they get their Death Shadow and their Tassigur back. It's gonna be an Ashiok. Fair enough, more Graveyard Hate. Can mill us for a bunch. Don't really mind. As foretold, ticks up. And our opponent's tapped out here, since they can't Stubborn Denial us. So Drakehaven will resolve. So we want to play the Drakehaven. Cycle Curator. Make a Drake, and now do we play the Tolaria West to have extra mana available? With Ashok in play, we can't even transmute the Tolaria West, so we should just play it as a land here. Can also Electro Dominance to burn the opponent out at some points. And then we'll have to decide if we want to block with the Drake token, or if we want to keep it to pressure the opponent. Snapcaster attacks. So let's say we get a Drake token and we get to connect, put the opponent to 6. I think we try and block with this Drake token to preserve our life total. Opponent's got a Dismember to kill our Drake, fair enough. Dismember they can play through Chalice, Fatal Push they wouldn't be able to, but don't necessarily expect them to keep in Fatal Push against our deck since it doesn't do much. Dismember on the other hand can still kill our big creatures. Ashok's gonna mill us. Alright, so we just want to draw more Cyclers here basically. And there's a Riverwinder, that's what we needed. Alright, I think we pass a turn here. Don't think we want to chalice on any other number at the moment. Ashiok mills us some more. Can have a look at what's exiled already. Snapcaster attacks. I think we're still fine uh, trying to block here. Since now with the Drakehaven, we have a game plan to close out this game. We've got Cryptic Commander's backup as well, just in case. Is this another dismember? It is. Alright, we could Cryptic counter draw. Seems okay. They could Mana League the Cryptic, then we take two. And we gotta hope to cycle into more Cyclers. Or Electro Dominance to kill the Snapcaster. And Stubborn Denial doesn't work in the face of Chalice. Alright, so... 
Drake token happens, we'll trade. Although now their opponent tapped out, we should have just gone for the win. Take two, fall to two, attack them for two, and then Electrodominance to finish them off. Since now we can only Electrodominance for five instead of the full amount. So definitely a mistake there. Should have just gone for the win. That's okay, hopefully we don't get punished too badly. Just play a Spire Bluff for now. Do we want a Chalice on two perhaps? Yeah, I guess Chalice on two is reasonable. We have a few two drops in our own deck. But it stops future Snapcaster Mages and Mana Leaks. And next turn we can Electrodominance for X equals 6 to burn them out, hopefully. Another Leyline of the Void Hardcast, that's fine. Ashok, down to 1 loyalty. Is a charm, gets countered by Roan Chalice now, that's okay. We'll just go for the win here. Casts, targeting our opponents. Alright, hopefully that does it. And we'll cast an As Foretold for free, why not? Alright, that does it. So an interesting game here after sideboard our opponent with a ley line on turn zero, but we were able to fight through it thanks to our Drake Haven out of the sideboard and uh, eventually just by burning them out since they took a lot of damage themselves, being a Death Shadow deck. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an interesting hand, all cyclers. So this could shape up to be a great hand if we draw the right pieces. This hand could do nothing. I think I'm gonna keep and then hope for the best. And we can start thinking about which creature to cycle first. We only have the one red mana, so it might be okay to cycle the Desert Serodon first. Turn one Mutavolt, could be Merfolk. Alright, not a Desert Serodon. Now we definitely want to cycle Serodon first, so we don't get choked on red mana. Alright, Island, so it could still be Merfolk. They didn't have turn one Aether Vial, and leading with Mutavolt means they might not be able to cast their Lords anytime soon. Alright, there's the Aether Vial, turn two. And end of turn will cycle Serodon. Aether Vial is pretty good against our Living End since they can kind of sandbag some creatures and then put a creature in end of turn after Living End happens. For now we'll just play Island Say Go, cycle some more creatures. Hopefully we don't have to hard cast as Curator, but I'm probably going to keep this as the last creature to cycle since it's the most hard castable. In game one it's usually pretty decent against Merfolk since they don't have a ton of interaction and they're a creature deck, so Living End can get them pretty good. But after sideboard, they pick up more counter spells, things get more complicated. So there's a Master of the Pearl Trident. We do have an island in play, so Island Walk is active. No real way for us to prevent that. Guess we could have played a mountain first, but uh, that would only have prevented it for so long. And there's Electrodominance, so now we just need a Living End. Remand the draw. Remand not great against their uh, Ether Vial. Dolaria West means we can transmute for Living End, although then. We let our opponent know we have Living End, but uh, I guess so be it. So let's transmute. And get a Living End. And then next turn we can go for it. Gotta watch out for maybe Curse Catchers. Making us pay one more mana. But we should be able to pay for it. And then we can still cycle some more creatures. To get a nice big Living End. So our hand definitely developed nicely. Opponent activates Ether Vial for a Silver Gill. Drawing them a card. And another Lord of Atlantis, our opponent's all in, hoping we don't have the means to cast a Living End. And we can also Electrodominance at instant speed, so we could be greedy and wait until the opponent activates Mutavolt before casting the Dominance and getting our Living End. Could be okay, since considering our opponent probably doesn't have many counter spells in their main deck, there's no real drawback to waiting. If they do happen to have a main deck spell pierce or other counter spell, we could get punished for waiting. And considering our opponent only has two cards in hand, it's probably relatively safe to just uh, Electro Dominance and then cycle two more creatures before we cast a Living End here. Seems fine. So let's cycle. Cycle. And then Electro Dominance for zero. Cast a Living End. And say go. And then hopefully next turn we can kill them. And our opponent concedes, alright. On to sideboarding against Merfolk. So how do we want to sideboard? Ingature can answer both Aether Vial and Relic of Progenitus, which they're likely to bring in. Anger of the Gods can wipe the board without having to rely on Living End, so that's good. And then, didn't think we want Fulminators, Thermal Script doesn't do a whole lot. And Chalice also not too effective, since we would need to play it on two. And Aether Vial kind of prevents us from using the Chalice. 
So these four cards we want to bring in, what do we take out? Fairy is still good against their curse catchers and sometimes we need to living in twice. So getting rid of some creatures in the graveyard is useful. Remand is pretty weak in this matchup since they have Aether Vial to counteract our counter spells. So I think we take that out, leave in the Cryptic Commands since those can still tap down the opponent's team. Has a bit more utility. Could also consider Drakehaven as a sideboard plan in case they have a lot of graveyard hate. Could be reasonable too. The problem there is that I'm not sure we're outracing the opponent with our drakes versus their merfolk since they can apply a lot of pressure, they're gonna have island walk. So while in theory it could be okay against graveyard hate, I don't think we want it against merfolk specifically. Just gotta hope to find through their graveyard hate, maybe with the help of Ingature. And we can expect our opponent to bring in some extra counter spells, like negates, dispels maybe. So the sideboard games are gonna play out a little bit more slowly than the first game, as both players bring in more interaction. Alright, so we've got a 7-card hand with some nice tools. Sadly, our only land is Cascade Bluffs, which doesn't let us cycle our cyclers. So we might struggle to hit our land drops. We are on the draw, and any land enables us Cascade Bluffs. So we need to draw land in two draw steps, basically. If we do, then this hand is pretty great, since we have both Anger and Ingot Chewer. Already have Electrodominance. So I think I'm willing to risk this, and hopefully we can draw land within our next two draw steps. On the play, I don't think I could keep this, but on the draw, getting that extra draw step to draw our lands, I think it's not uh, not crazy to keep. Opponent with the turn on Muta Vault, no Aether Vial or Relic. Curator to draw, alright. Hopefully we get there. Turn to Islands. And activate Muta Vault, alright. Pretty passive play. Not adding more stuff to the board, maybe afraid of that living end. Or they just don't have any better play. Alright, well, didn't get there. Have to discard to hand size, at least we get to put a creature in the graveyard here, which is, I guess, kind of nice. So Desert Serodon can go. So while we're not drawing the card from the cycling, at least we're powering up our living end for the future. And Mutavolt is gonna get in there once again. Alright. And there's a Scalding Torn, perfect. So let's get a basic... So we probably want to get a Mountain, so that if they Spreading Seas the Mountain, we can still make every color with Cascade Bluffs. And if they Spreading Seas Cascade Bluffs, we still have a Red Source Mountain it is. Don't want to take too much damage here. And then we can make Double Blue for now, which lets us suspend Ancestral and Cycle Curator. Have to do it main phase, because we can only suspend at Sorcery Speed and draw an Island. So if they don't Spreading Seas us, we have access to Anger of the Gods as well now. Our opponent maybe with a handful of double blue cards. Just plays a Biomancer for the turn and nothing else, so they don't have the most functional hand at the moment. Spire Bluff the draw, so we don't have to worry about Colored Man anymore. Bit too early to pull the trigger on this Anger of the Gods. No target for Ingot Chewer. Can always evoke the Ingot Chewer even if there's no target just to put it in the graveyard. Don't think we want to do that at this point. So we're probably just gonna pass a turn. And then we could cycle the Izzet Charm to dig for some action, we could cycle the Curator, although just hard casting the Curator of Mysteries isn't all that terrible. Although now that they found double blue, maybe not so much, although we actually don't have any islands in play. So if we found another mountain to cast a Curator, we could realistically still uh, have a 4-4 blocker for all the merfolk. I think we're just gonna cycle this Izzet Charm end of turn, so for now we can take two. See what we can draw here. Alright, there's a living end, perfect. So we can go off, and our opponent doesn't have blue mana for any counter spells. So we're fine discarding Ingot Shure and Steam Vents, and then we can cycle the Curator. Put more creatures in the graveyard for this living end. And we also have Anger of the Gods as another sweeper effect, but might as well go for a living end now. I guess our opponent could have a Ravenous Trap still, or like a Surgical Extraction. No Ravenous Trap. And drawing fairy is actually quite good against the potential surgical, since if they surgical curator, we can just exile in response and keep the second one in the graveyard. So that was actually a good pickup. So I'm not gonna discard it just to get a 2 2 flyer in play. Gonna keep it in case of surgical. So we can electrodominance dealing one damage to our opponent here. And I don't think I play out islands since we don't want to enable island walk for the opponent. Cast a living end. Put all creatures in play, no surgicals. So we should be able to close out the game pretty quickly here. And our opponent concedes, so they didn't have the best hand here in game two. All right, that's going to do it for today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.